Yo, Lord willing, Jeff Canarsi, Mock Talk Radio, check it out. Yo, we stay quiet, like Russell Buffalino, when things will get ugly like Pessy's death in Casino. Who do we know? No one, nobody, but we're all well respected like Della Croce and Gotti. I know wild nights, a been a not turn. Light up a cigar and watch your spot burn. You'll get patty whacked, I'm tough like Irish dock workers. Run with guys, with guys, hooligans and black lurkers. Corner berserkers, street savvy soldiers. You owe, you better pay. Don't make me say I told you. Told you don't betray, I say what I mean. Providence and Brooklyn all the way to the bean. I'd rather be unseen, like Benny the Chin. I don't gotta go to Vegas to see cities of sin. Pull the pin, drop bombs like Danny Green. I write homicide like the murder machine. Lansky Luciano, mastermind the racket. Up in the clam house with a million in my jacket. Move around when the streets get darker. Pay homage to real bosses like Gambino and Patriarcha. Mob talking, but you don't talk to the mob. Lord Will and Jeff Canarsi, we stay on our job. This is mob talk. Straight you're a good debater and you're not afraid of a fight. So why have your comments off? Just out of curiosity. Well, I've turned them on for a lot of things. I mean, your shorts you do. Right. In some of my lives, I think they're on. But almost as soon as I turn them on, there's photos of oh, my sense. family's homes. Okay. What's the address? Yeah. And at what point? And, and that, and, and yeah. I just want to clarify. Yeah, please. I don't have to take that abuse. Agreed. Like, I don't come to work and slap the dick out of their mouth. <laughs> you kind of why do you have a disdain for informants in your opinion i don't disdain them i downright fucking hate them that's okay, that's okay. but see this is why i can say it, yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. just crazy it's yeah. medication mm. i have a disdain for them because no man should ever go to prison on the words of another man number yeah. one number two in 90 percent of the cases you look at the informant has done more vile and disturbing crap than those that are being accused uh number three i find it oxymoronic when a uh, a man, Joey Merlino, because yeah. everybody knows who he is, yeah. he goes in front of the judge, they can bring up everything he's ever been accused of, including murders and whatever else. Even though he's acquitted, yeah. it doesn't really matter because it's a character judgment. But yet in that same case, you can't turn that around and say, well, let's judge the rat. Judges don't allow that. Mm. So for me, it's like you're walking in, you're already behind the, the, the eight And ball. now, it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi. All right, do me a solid. Press the number one, and we will get started if you can hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the top of the chat really quick just uh, just to highlight. Uh, this is me saying hello to everybody. Just going to click on all of the uh, things. Lewis with Shaken LB, Michael. Hello, Andrea. Terrell, how are you? Carlo Gambino's in the house. Fat cats, yeah, his net was shaken. Uh, Donnie Ragu, KXTA, is in the house. Uh, let's see, Susan is in the house. Who else do we have? Barry, what's shaken, my friend? Barry, we're going to cover Detroit on Friday. A lot of people have been asking for it, so I'm going to give you Detroit. Uh, what's shaken, Donald? How are you? Madit, how are you? Stephen, what is shaken? Pat, how are you? Dennis, what's shaken? I see all the ones, so I'm going to keep going down a little bit. We've got like 77 in here. K. Goody, what's shaken? Gilbert Goobies Castro, that's an interesting name. Alan, how are you? Uh, Solo, what's shaken? David Lopez, how are you? Ryan Fletcher, hello. God, it's got to be what? Uh, Two o'clock in the morning in England. Oof. You're up late. <laughs> Vicious artwork, wood shaking. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things tonight. Uh, I didn't come with a really a whole entire show, but it came with a lot of topics. Uh, and then we're going to open it up to the chat. 
Uh, and uh, this is where you guys really have an opportunity to sort of to play a role in the show uh, because you're going to be able to express your opinions because your opinions are important. And that's what the crux of the show is. G Peso would shake and uh, Chamberlain what's happening. Uh, so I'm trying to think of the, the, the first thing I want to say here because <laughs> it, it uh, I didn't want to say anything about what I'm about to say. And I'm going to make this very, very, very clear to the three morons who decided to sit in a show for an hour and a half and talk about the way I look, make fun of me being abused as a kid. I'm just going to say this. If I were each one of you, I would just be quiet. One of you has can't open her teeth. So you have no room to talk. The other one sounds like Liberace. You've got no room to talk. And for the third one, with some of the allegations that have been levied against you, you should be the last person having to say anything about anybody. So with all that being said, go fuck yourselves. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you try to make yourself relevant talking about me. Okay, just sit at home, be miserable pricks, and judge how other men look. That tells me more about your psyche than mine. So you can go fuck yourself, all three years. That's how I feel about it. And if you want to keep making videos, go right ahead. But like I said, you guys can call me any names, talk about me, say whatever you want about me. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of the allegations about some of you have never been levied about me ever, nor will they ever be. So you might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Just saying. All right. Now that I've got. Oh, and, and by the way, for anybody that goes in these chats and participates. If you think I don't see you there, like as men, why would you even put yourself in that situation? But anyway, enough said, I'm not going to talk any more about it and don't give a fuck. We are going to talk about South Philadelphia tonight, a hundred percent. But before we get there, uh, this is where I need you guys to kind of jump in tonight. Do me a favor. Press the number one. If you watched the last couple of videos that I put up. And and there's there's a reason why uh, I'm asking particularly uh, about a certain content creator. Uh, just do me a favor, press one in there if you've watched it. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking you is because I'm going to tell you something that happened. I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to believe happened. And this is probably something I shouldn't talk about, but I'm going to. It's called Lawyers Galore. So after I did the last show I uploaded, it was, I don't know what, 15, 18 minutes, whatever the case may be. I got a call from my attorney who tells me that another attorney who I've known for a decade wants to talk to me. And uh, is Angel Gotti in the chat? Because I want to I want to mention her, but I don't want to do it if if it's going to piss her off. Angel, if you're listening, send me a text because I wanted to bring up that you kind of knew what it was about, but I don't want to like put stuff out there if it's not okay. So I'll 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 wait a second to see if I hear from her. Uh, and if I don't, then I will just uh keep going. Uh so anyway, I'm talking to my uh, this guy who used to be my lawyer, and he tells me that this other attorney wants to talk to me. Now keep in mind. Uh, hold on. I gotta, okay. Um, uh, keep in mind, I've known this other attorney for a decade. I've been to his house, hung out with him, had beers with him. Great guy. Don't have a problem with, with him at all. But I had talked to somebody else who had a similar problem. And apparently a certain content creator who likes to lie about people, uh, a content creator who is an absolute coward decided to call this attorney and to get this attorney to try to talk me down from stating my opinions, which no attorney is ever going to get me to stop doing number one. Okay. Uh, and the way it was explained to me was that this content creator had a problem with somebody in New York because somebody was going to go after him for stuff that he said. So as a favor, this attorney called that content creator. So could you please take that down? Because that's not true. It, it's, it's not relevant. It's going to create problems for you. And so that's what happened. So this attorney says to me, 
you know, as a friend, we've been friends a long time, leave the guy alone. And of course I explained my position and then my former attorney explained my position. And that's, that's what you're reduced to. So now people can say whatever they want. Uh, so now people can say whatever they want. And if you respond, which you have a right to do to correct factuality and uh, other things and indiscretions, they just call an attorney. That's what they do. Now, this attorney doesn't work for that content creator, and he's not going to take me to court. He's not going to do anything. But let this be a message. I'm not going to stop. I am not going to stop expressing my opinions. And that's just the bottom line. So if that's how you're going to deal with things by turning, turning, tucking your tail and running away and calling all these attorneys, keep doing it. It's not going to change the bottom line of when I run into you. It's not. I'm just being honest. This has now happened to me twice with the same content creator. So if you don't like people combating you and you don't like people telling the truth, then try telling it once in a while. Just try telling it. And, and if that story gets denied, I will bring that lawyer on my show and you'll hear it from his mouth. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to keep doing what I do best. But if you attack my friends, I'm coming after you. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And for anybody that wants to say I'm inventing this, talk to Angel Gotti. He did the same thing to her. Yep. He can't take it. He can run his mouth about everybody, but then runs to a lawyer when it comes back on him. That's what petty cowards do. That's what cowards do. And he's a coward. And that's the, uh, that's the absolute truth. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, here's another thing really quick. So people on YouTube tend to call people that cover the mob, mob humps. They call us mob humps, but then they do entire shows about other people who cover the mob. That makes you a groupie of the mob genre then. Idiots. And it's funny because their whole rhetoric is, oh, they're mob groupies, mob humps. But what are you guys talking about? Seriously. Seriously. Anyway, so that's it. That's it for the drama. Like I said, people can say whatever they want, but you better be careful. Because <laughs> some of the accusations I see made about some of these people, it's not good. It's not good. All right. So uh, as you guys know, and part of the description of what we were going to talk about tonight, if I can just find my little notes here, is this. Okay. So for those of you that are in the chat, because this was a really big topic, and the problem is, is that last week when I was on, I... I covered it in a way that I wish I wouldn't have. Uh, I didn't sort of explain my stance as good as I should have. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar, uh, Joey Merlino was on YouTube for a long time. Now he's got his own Patreon page or whatever else. And he made a statement that he thought that Sonny Francis was a rat because he talked to his son, Michael, after the fact that he knew Michael was a rat. Okay. Does everybody remember that? Do me a favor. Press one in the chat. If, if you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Gilbert. I really do appreciate that. Okay. So people in the chat, obviously know what that, uh, what that was about. Now, let me explain something. And this is going to may upset a lot of you. Uh, is look, there is what we call traditionalist. Okay. And there are those that believe in the code and the code is set forth by guys in the street, not by mob content creators, not by fans. It, it's with guys that are in the streets doing their things and guys in the streets believe in whatever they believe in, whether or not I agree with it or not it really has no bearing. However, there's a caveat to what I'm about to say. Uh, it, the code, I, I often say this, the code gets applied by people that do mob content shows when they like somebody they're dealing with. It doesn't apply 
uh, to people that that they don't want to uh, to apply to. OK, so if Joey believes that he's in his right to believe that. However, the caveat to that is. If you're going to call yourself a traditionalist and then you're on YouTube, there's a little hypocrisy that comes with that. I'm being honest. I'm being fully transparent. And that's what I meant to say is that that's a little bit of a hypocritical moment. And it just goes to show where organized crime has sort of gone over the years. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being transparent. Because I would be a hypocrite if I did not say that. I don't agree with it. I never have. But to each their own, everybody has to do what's best for them. But if you're going to be a traditionalist, then you kind of got to look at the, the big glowing elephant in the room. And that's all I meant by it. That's all I meant by that. Uh, so I wanted to get also to this really quick. And this this is going to be interesting, I think. Let me see if I can share the screen here. Okay. This was an email that I got, and it says, Thanks for answering my question last week. Always appreciate it. Not sure if you're doing a Q&A this week, but I'm shocked with the amount of YouTube videos of people cl claiming to speculate on the new current structure in South Philadelphia. Now, I've heard you go on some shows recently and listen to other people in the genre, and I'm 100% convinced that basically nobody has any clue what South Philly is like, the history, or the context of the time. I honestly think your loyal listeners are more knowledgeable than half of the so-called experts on YouTube, and I agree. I agree with that. Uh, getting off my rant here, what do you make of all of this? Uh, it's all hot garage, and they don't know what they're talking about. No one does. But at the same time, it's heat, right? And this is all a part of the game when certain controversial podcast is out there making headlines. Or do you think these YouTube experts are going to start losing credibility and going away because of their lack of facts? Uh, thanks and sorry if this rant isn't, uh, or it's more of a rant than a question. So there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, and I'm going to say this. Uh, not a single person that covers these guys. First of all, let, let me make this clear. I don't cover current shit. I don't because there's no reason for me to. I cover history. I enjoy that more. However, I will tell you this. The people that do talk about this, specifically there's two or three, have no clue what they're talking about uh, at all. And the problem is, is when you start to get into this idea that credibility, we use the term credibility. Now, what, what makes somebody credible? Well, credible is somebody who talks about history, knows the facts, can give you a credible opinion uh, and someone you can trust when they tell you something that it's that it's it's factual because when it's not it just becomes an opinion and that's just what it is the problem with credibility on YouTube is can you be credible doing this a year and I think you can be if you're taking your knowledge or uh, your information and you're using court files and uh, 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 transcripts, 302s, and stuff like that, like court documents, then you can be pretty accurate on telling a story. The problem becomes, <coughs> excuse me, what the problem becomes is that um, if you allow your opinion to override common sense, or if you allow your opinion to be stated such as a fact and you're not sort of telling your audience, hey, you know, this is my two cents, but who knows, then really all you're you're simply doing is regurgitating what everybody else knows, right? And I think an opinion, like an asshole, because everybody's got one, uh, I think an, an opinion is valuable. And I think a lot of people are afraid to express their opinions, but then there's the flip side of that. Uh Thanks, young D. I miss you, buddy. I hope you're doing all right. Um, the flip side of that is then you have people who will make shows who don't like somebody, and that will infiltrate them presenting to you, who's the audience, the truth of the matter. And I think that there's a large difference between, say, what I do and what some of these other people do. Uh, but in the case of people that are going to talk about current current events, they're entitled to do that. 
I, I personally don't have a problem with people doing that. However, I think you get into a gray area when you start naming people that have committed murders that have and, and, and stuff like that. And that's just salacious. And that's designed to get attention and it's designed to uh, get clicks and likes. Uh, and obviously, when somebody from South Philadelphia has a podcast and all of that, of course, it's it's going to bring the masses. Everybody's trying to to sort of suck off the teat of Joey Merlino. And I totally get it. However, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and all you have to do is listen to three or four of their videos about the topic, go back a year, and each time it's somebody different. And the thing is, and, and I can say this about myself. Uh, as much as I do know, as much as I never will talk about, I don't know everything. I really don't. I really don't. Uh, but I think I'm more informed than most of these people are. And there is a large part of what I do is deflection. I'm not going to lie to you. And I think a lot of people know that by now. I deflect a lot of stuff. I protect my friends a little bit. That's not to say that they're totally guilty or totally innocent either. That's my job. The mob has never had a mouthpiece like me before, and that's why I'm well-liked. That's what people don't understand. I defend people. I look for plausible explanations, whereas everybody else sort of just wants to pull up the, the meat and the potatoes and, and make assertions that are half-based and not even true. But I can tell you with a certifiable fact. Not a single person that has been talking about them in any instance in the last year knows what they're talking about. They're totally off-base naming people in places that they that they really aren't uh and the thing is is like as a content creator the one caveat that i try to give you is if i don't know something i am going to say to you guys i don't know i'm not going to go well i'm going to just tell you i don't know because to me i'd rather be honest than to give you some bullshit information you know and that's sort of the way uh, i feel about it uh I could cover current if I wanted to, but that's just not my gig. That's not my gig. Uh, I do have something else I want to talk about, so don't go anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go through the chat for just a couple of seconds. Young D, would shake and be safe in Mexico, my friend. I hope you're wearing that bulletproof vest. You're going to need it. Uh, yeah, uncles, uh, Joey's uncle did uh, go bad. Absolutely. Uh, guests cannot jump on right at this second. No. Uh, let's see. I listen. I just try to be, I did listen. I just try to be honest at the end of the day. I'm not for everybody. And I understand that. Um, but at the same time, I, I just think you have a duty as a content creator in whatever field it is to know what you're talking about. And if you don't know, speculation is great. Isn't that what makes the, like, it's fun to speculate, uh, how pissed off Vito Genovese was when he was sitting in the can realizing that Carlo Gambino and, and others screwed him over. It's fun to speculate on things like that. It's fun to speculate if Nicky Scarfo doesn't go to prison, what happens on the streets? That's that's what makes the genre fun. But when you use speculation and try to say it's a fact, that's a problem because speculation is not fact. I mean, I could speculate that in three days I'll turn into a big breasted elephant. And my haters will say, well, you already are there, so don't worry about it. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. And the new thing, you know the new thing? that You guys will find this funny. Uh, you guys will find this really funny. You know the new thing now is for them to all say that I'm associated with people? You guys ever said the hello to somebody? That doesn't mean you're associated with anything. So one day it's, I'm crazy. I don't know anybody. The next day, it's, oh, he would come in his pants to go out to dinner with a wise guy. Then it's, oh, my God, he's associated. Which one is it? Would you would you haters figure out which one it is that I am? Like, and stick to it? Like, every two months, you guys got me changing. I'm not an organized crime. I've never said I was invo involved in organized crime. If you hang out with people long enough, that's just what happens. It doesn't matter. That's just what happens. That's not something I'm jumping up and down and cheering about. But people will take what you say and, and sort of manipulate that into, you know, uh, any way they want, you know. Um, all right. So here's another thing. I don't know if you guys are on Facebook, but if you guys seen like these mob sort of group chats or these mob channels, 
And this one, I want everybody to get involved in the chat. You guys are going to be very important for this next little segment. Uh, so I was in one of the uh, mob groups that I sort of post my videos and stuff in. And this is exactly what I come across. Now, this is somebody who is a John Gotti fan. His name is Julian Wallace. And he posts a photo of Paul Castellano. And he says, John brought down the New York mob with that hit. I know his reasons, and it probably was either Paul or him. But he destroyed the Gambinos with that. I like John. He's always been my favorite, but he should have kept his mouth shut. Rogerio was quack quack. Really? I've heard the tapes over and over. Here's the problem with people who post things. Number one, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Okay. Uh, number two, I really kind of want to get into this for a second because I want to ask a question to the chat. And this, hey, listen, whether you're a Gotti fan or not, uh, this is this is going to be important. So let's let's start with the, the first line, okay? John brought down the New York Mafia with that hit. Could someone explain to me how John Gotti brought down the New York Mafia, the whole entire five families, with that hit? I would love for somebody to be able to explain that to me. And after this, I'm going to drop the link, and if people want to come on and talk about this subject, I think it's an interesting subject. The media will exaggerate Joey's statement anyway. Okay, I don't know what that's about. But um, but John Gotti did not bring down the New York Mafia with that hit. John Gotti did not even bring down the Gambino crime family with that hit. Number one, under Paul Castellano, the Gambinos were making about 275 to 300 million dollars a year. <clears throat> a year after he's gone and John takes over his boss, it's over 470 million a year. So financially, they were in a better, they were in a better uh they were in better standing. And they also expanded into other areas and other rackets that they were traditionally not involved in. Okay. Uh let's see. It's like anything else, extremely more complicated. Okay, so he didn't bring down the whole entire New York mob. Okay, uh, I know his reasons, and it was it probably was either Paul or him. I don't even. We're not even going to digest that because I have no idea what the hell that means. But he likes John Gotti. He's always been his favorite, but he should have kept his mouth shut. So who did John Gotti get arrested besides himself? Because wasn't it Gravano who testified against everybody? Now, granted. I will, I will, I will give you this. Okay. I will give you this. John Gotti got caught on wiretaps. Okay. Everybody knows this, but every other boss did as well. Tony ducks. The old, the commission case was only the commission case because of Tony ducks. Do people forget that? Listen, here's some reality. Historically, men have killed bosses going back to the 1880s in new Orleans. That's always been a thing. That's that's nothing new. What just because there's some there's some rule they can't do it? They've done it anyway. You know, Genovese did it. Albert Anastasia did it. Carlo Gambino did it. John Gotti did it. Antonio Caponegro did it. Frank Narducci did it. Do I need to keep going? They all did it. They all did it. Yes, Carlo, you did it. So you can't hold John Gotti to some weird standard that doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. And I'm not going to go through like the whole entire process of it because we've talked about it a lot on this show. But the reality is, is people want to hold him to another standard, but like, do they do any research? Y you know what I mean? Uh, and he's heard the tapes. Well, okay. Angela had a big mouth. I don't think anybody's going to tell you the opposite of that. But when I see these, these sort of comments and you know, you guys know me well enough, I go in and I'll, I'll, you know, pipe up to, well, you kind of got this wrong, but that's the problem. And it's a bigger problem with like YouTube and social media is that anybody can say anything and they don't do any research and, and they just, uh, they just go on and on and on and on and on. But Gotti did nothing different than those before him didn't. 
And that's just the facts of the matter. And another thing, I will say this. There was a statement made on a recent show. And I'll drop the link in just a second, guys. There was a statement made on a show. And uh, my Canadian counterparts that are in this chat may know the, uh, the actual answer to this. This person who is uh, apparently uh, a well-known author, legit Scott Bernstein, I'll just go ahead and say it. He said that the bikers control all of Canada. <laughs> Does he not know what Andrangheta is? You know what I mean? It, 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 you hear so much weird stuff. Uh, wasn't quack quack what gave the FBI the reason to tap Paul's house? Well, they they were they were tapping Angelo Ruggiero from day one. They're like the second his brother died in the plane crash, they they started they tapped his house immediately. You know, and that was going on for years. So they had Angelo was fried either way. He didn't really have a choice, but but Paul's got tapped because of a lot of different things. I mean, you had the Westies, you had Roy DeMail, you had a million different things going on. You had uh, Willie Boy Johnson talking. I mean, it, th there's a lot of things. It wasn't one. Um, it wasn't just one person. It was just uh, a lot of things. And yes, it is true. Neil was stalling Paul from hearing the tapes, but Paul already had copies of the tapes. So it was sort of like a null and void. He was testing Neil, his resolve, more than, more than anything. Um, and let's see. Uh, the FBI loves tapping the Italians. Well, yeah, I've always said, why don't people meet in, like graveyards and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. If anybody wants to talk about any of these things, I didn't bring a huge format tonight. There were just a couple of things I wanted to talk about on Friday on the podcast. We are doing Detroit uh, and we're doing Detroit differently than anybody else has ever done it. We're going back to like 1890, 1900. Uh, so it's going to be pretty in depth. I'm not sure how many shows it's going to be. We still have some new Orleans stuff that I think we're going to cover on Friday as well. Uh, all right, Carlo, uh, don't pick up the phone and, uh, have fun doing whatever you're doing. Uh, but as far as John Gotti goes, it, it seems like, and, and that's sort of my point. Like there, there are those that like John Gotti, those that don't. And it seems like the ones that don't typically go to well he murdered a boss and, and he broke the rules i even heard gene morello a rat a rat say oh uh that guy killed a boss he broke the rules like you have a rat who was involved in the life who doesn't even know the history of organized crime which he was somewhat involved in that to me that's mind-blowing to me that's mind-blowing how can a rat who was involved in organized crime to some extent not understand that that Luciano and all these other guys before them did that. You know? Uh, so it's, it's, it's always amazing to me how people pick and choose. Yeah, Detroit's going to be a fun one. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I knew, a lot of stuff I didn't know, but we're, we're taking it all the way back from the day it started. And there's some very interesting things you guys are going to find out on Friday. Uh, just about the black hand and then the white hand is established to counteract the black hand, but the white hand, uh, the Adamos were just basically shaking down one group over another. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, who wins in a shirtless street fight between the Chan and Tommy karate? Oh, Tommy karate. Are you kidding me? No, Tommy karate. Just, he's all, he's on a whole nother level, a whole nother level. And they did. They absolutely did. They absolutely did. But it, it's kind of ingenious that um, of what they did, of what they tried to do. But much like most organized crime history, especially if you listen to the podcast, like here, I'll drop that link for the podcast really quick so you guys know where to find it. The interesting thing is when you look at organized crime from uh, an infancy standpoint, a lot of stuff you see with Detroit, Philadelphia, New York, it was, it all sort of starts this kind of way. And then everybody fights each other. Then it levels out. Then they fight each other again. And that's always been sort of the reoccurring theme with all organized crime families. And with New Orleans, especially, it was the same sort of thing. Like 
to me, it's just odd. The chin was absolutely. He's a good fighter. Yeah, the Columbo stuff is re-uploads. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll I'll take stuff off the podcast that's like a year old, and I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll put it out. Just be, but you know what the thing is? It it kills me. It's it, it. Nobody listens to it. Nobody nobody listens to it. Uh, could you give insight to Giuseppe Morelli's importance? It seems he was ahead of a family well respected for a long time until his ultimate demise. Of course, yeah, the clutch hand. Yeah, I mean, he really was really the first. See, when I say first, there's going to be, you know, people are going to go to to, to Louisiana and, and argue that, but he was really the for the 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 forerunner of, of what a boss of bosses was. It didn't end well for him, uh, and we're actually going to be on location where he got clipped uh, next week. Uh, but yeah, he, we, we did some, we did a whole entire, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel and go down to our playlist, our videos, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Uh, we actually did a whole entire history of the Gambinos, uh, with clutch hand and everybody else. We really went in depth. Uh, and obviously, you know, I don't regurgitate a ton of stuff, uh, off the top of my head, just because once I do it, I kind of put it away and move on to the next one. Doing okay. Doing okay. And I would agree. I would totally agree once it really took over. Yeah, absolutely. But they had those early problems that a lot of other families had too. Uh, I like the older videos. Uh, and I sure as hell listen. I've said it before. I'll say it again. 90% of my mafia knowledge. I appreciate it, buddy. I appreciate it. But you know, the thing is, it's like, um, you guys know probably better than others. Like, I've covered things that nobody else does. And I think the difference between me and a lot of say new people is they like to cover sort of the dramatic hot topics that are related to drama. And I just, I stay away from that as much as I can because I, I just don't want to do that. But you would think like the JFK K thing would be huge. It's not, nobody listens to it. Uh, you would think that some of the other stuff we've done would be listened to. It's just, you know, there's no telling what people like and what people don't. But I do notice that the majority of sort of views are coming from drama, and I'm just not willing to do it. Otherwise, if I did, <laughs> forget it. I'd I'd be outpacing everybody, but I, I just don't uh I just don't want to do it. And nobody covers Canada because they don't know Canada, they don't understand Canada. And the thing is, is that it's not that um it's not that I'm any more adept in it. It's just that. You have to, if you're going to learn something, you have to ingratiate yourself to it. You got to put yourself all the way down in it and you got to get court, court transcripts. If you're not willing to get court transcripts, there's, there's really no point to what you're doing. Uh, I read some transcripts today, legitimately from like the Kafafa hearings and everything else. And I, I thought about doing a show on it and I'm like, what the hell is the point? Anybody can access these files and, and those typically are not very popular. However. Thank you, Stephen. I really do appreciate it. However, I do think this. I do think that our on-location thing is going to be a little different uh, because I'm going to take you to some places that you can't go, especially if you don't live here in the city. And I think that while it's not going to be an in-depth biography on every single character of, of the mafia, because otherwise we'd be doing 45-minute documentaries, but I think taking you to like four and five places that are very instrumental in a guy's life and showing you what it looks like and giving you like, uh, you know, a 15, 20 minute biography on why we're there and, and everything. I think it's going to be good. We'll see. We'll see. It's just been a pain in the ass because of the weather. It's been hard, uh, you know, getting everything done, but we're getting closer. We're getting closer. And and there, I'm going to pick a couple of you. Anybody who's a, 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 uh, a member on this page will get early access to that. It'll go on there first before it goes public, but a couple of you will see it beforehand uh, just because I always, uh, I always like to get sort of everybody else's opinion first, you know, what do you like this or is it better like that? And uh, I'm sure as we get going and, and do more and more and more uh, eventually, I'm going to tell you the truth. Eventually that's all I want to be doing. Like I'll do this once a week and I'll upload a little bit of content, but the most of it's going to be on location stuff that I want to do. Uh, 
and I'll always do the podcast. That's that's never going to change. We're also going to get back to some of the horror stuff as well because I got a package in the mail today that is going to blow your minds. So I've just got to figure out timing on that. Uh, have you heard about the collaborating Scopo that got busted in Montreal, his brothers? And, uh, uh, absolutely. There's there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going on up there. Now what they're doing is killing guys they suspected of informing on them when they get out of prison or if they think that they're going to meddle in the turf beefs. That's why you're seeing guys like Wooly who got killed because they were afraid he was going to get involved in some turf beefs. And because he played both sides of defense, there you go. Well, and the JFK stuff is never going to end. It's never going to end. There's, there's always going to be something to talk about. Uh, the videos about recent YouTube drama are one hit wonders. Yeah, I, I listen. I don't. I don't really watch any of it. But every once in a while, somebody will put me on to something. I just listen. I just think anybody that makes fun of anybody that was abused when they were a kid really is a low life, you know. And if that's if that's your best way of attacking people, then you really need to look at yourself in the mirror just a little bit. Uh, if you need any help and fell, I may. I I actually may. Um, I I am going to be down in Philadelphia for something, but I'm I got to be honest with you. I'll be completely honest. I was supposed to go down there before all of this, but I'm going to wait till May. And the reason why is the weather's going to be a little warmer and I'll be able to go see my buddy. And, uh, but yeah, I may need some help, but anybody that's in the Philly area that wants to hang out and chill, I'm down for it. You know, uh, have they figured out who, which side took out Wooly? I, to be a perfect, here we go. This is the best example. I don't know. I could speculate. But I, I honestly don't know. But I think if I was going to speculate and take a, an educated guess on this, I think everybody knows who did it as far as on the street level. You know, you got you to gotta understand the Rizzutos are still trying to hold on to whatever's left. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that they tried to kill Rizzuto what, not six months ago when he lived, there, there's going to be consequences down the line for years. I'm from Springfield, Illinois. We're under the authority of Chicago. My grandmother met Al Capone when she was a little girl. Fantastic. Uh, who took out Wooly? I know, but I can't say. I don't. I have no idea. I, I have my suspicions, but I think what you're going to see in Canada is everybody's still jockeying. You know, but but for anybody to say the bikers are controlling Canada are out of their fucking minds. I mean, if you look at the just the, the last three and a half years in Canada, Hamilton and, and Laval, if you look at the men who were killed, it's very obvious what's going on here. You know what I mean? And that's where sort of street acumen comes into play. Uh, the bikers are not fully in control of that because if the bikers were, you would begin to see jockeying from one side versus the other. Because if, if, if one, so it's like saying if my team is the strongest, uh, and Jesus's team is on the, the right and Harvey's team or Will's team is on the left. If I'm the strongest, you're going to see one of those sides start to back the other one. You haven't seen that yet. And it's sort of, uh, I look at it like a triangle guys are lobbing grenades at each other a little bit here and there, and they're all waiting to see how it's going to all lay out. And truly what you're going to have is you're going to have the Rizzutos trying to regain a foothold and you're going to have a dragon wanting to shut that down. And that's that's what a lot of this is about. And then you have the bikers in the middle of it lobbing grenades on both sides. Uh, and there's something a little more specific I know about, but I, I don't want to uh, I, I don't want to uh, say uh, I don't want to be like the people I complain about. So I'm just not going to say anything. Yes, yes, there is. Yes, there is. That person also claims the outlaws are running Buffalo. I live here, and that's the farthest from the truth. Yeah, I know. And that's the problem, Alex. See, and that's my thing with people. Like, where do you get that information from? Where are you hearing that from? Because in all reality, like, stuff that I say on my podcast, you're not going to hear anywhere else. And that's I'm not bragging about anything. I'm just saying because I can reveal a little more there than I would publicly. You know what I mean? And And I think... 
I have a real problem when people get on their shows and they start saying, this one's the boss, this one's the underboss, this one's the consigliere, this one's doing this, this one got made right before he went to prison. And none of it's true. And none of it's true. But it doesn't stop them uh, from saying it. I've seen them trying to deport. Yeah, I, Jamie, I've been watching a lot of that. Um, but yeah, they've been active going and in Drina. I mean, Catroni was in Drina. That's how far back that goes. So when you hear Andregata, it's in Drina. There's, there's another phrase for it. But they, the Catronis were Andregata. They were not Mafia. They were Andregata. That's, that's been a big thing over there. You know, and the biker stuff is never going to really end. You know, uh, I never bought the activity Gigante Gigante played at work for a long time until he slipped up. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And what cracks me up? Uh, no, Deary, I don't need you. I, I, no, Angel. I was just uh, talking about the the Gerard stuff. That's all. It's it's. I've already talked about it. No big deal. Uh, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, Mob Boss One. Uh. You know what's funny is a lot of people say, oh, I don't like Vinny Gigante because he played played the nut act. How could you not respect that? Like the guy, the guy spent more time on the streets than he did in the can. And I think that makes him a little more proficient as a boss than somebody who can't stay out on the streets for more than a year at a time. That's just my opinion. But you guys can have a, a, a different opinion. But I, th- I think Vinny Gigante was a very smart guy. He played everybody so well. But then there is, you know, the 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 uh, the question that I get all the time is, well, you it used to be in organized crime. If you tried to kill somebody and you botched the hit, you got killed yourself. And so, why I've always said why Vinny Gigante was not killed was because Vito Genovese got what he wanted anyway because Frank Costello stepped down. So it really wasn't a bot. It was it was definitely botched, but Genovese still got he got what he wanted. But if Costello hadn't have stepped down. Then they might kill Vinny Gigante probably would have been killed if that's the case. Could be wrong. I just sent you a message, but it was way too long. Did you get it? No, 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 I didn't. Uh, No. What did you say about Maria Licardi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bikers run to York too, right? Right? No, no. I don't understand why anybody would say that. It just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense to me. But then again, this is a guy that also got slapped around by a bunch of guys in Detroit. So then he keeps saying that's not true, but I happen to know it is because I know people in Detroit, more people than you do when you live there. Uh, it's interesting how the bikers operate in Canada. Same with Philly and perhaps Chicago. Seems like the rest of the United States bikers are literally a biker club. Well, the the, the Hells Angels here are no joke. They're no joke. They're nice guys still. I know they do bad things, but I've never had a problem with a single Hells Angel in my life. I have a ton of memorabilia from the recent closing of Sons of Italy post 670. They used to do, they used my dump trucks and were going to throw away some amazing stuff. That is awesome. That would that would be stuff you just put on the wall. A hundred percent. I'm the consigliere of Canada. Are you now? Oh, there's a Hell's Angels club here in Minneapolis. I sure wouldn't want to mess with any of those guys, but I don't ever hear about them in the news. Neither do I. They they don't talk about them very often here. And I got to be honest, I don't know a lot about uh, biker guys. I really, I mean, I know a lot of them, but I really don't know nothing. But they've always been very polite. That Listen, the Hell's Angels club in Manhattan was like four blocks from me for years. Then they sold it and they moved upstate, well, out of the, out of the city. But I'm going to tell you something. Ever since they left, the crime and the crackheads, it's been out of control here because they kept the neighborhood safe for like eight blocks, you know? So, so much for that whole, they do nothing good for their community shit, right? Uh, let's see. And a great consigliere at that, Andrea. Uh, I've been hearing biker crap since the 90s. It doesn't end. No, it's never going to end. It's never going to end where there's money to be made. You know, uh, is Montreal the most important port in North America? No, I, I, I I'm going to say Hamilton. I really am. And I always say that because it's close to Buffalo, you know, Toronto, Buffalo, that's always going to be the ebb and flow. That is truly where 
narcotics and, and tobacco and everything is smuggled. You know what I mean? So that's always going to sort of take a foothold. And that's why when you go back into the Canadian history of it all, uh, especially when Carmine Galante went over there, they didn't mind. So Well, they, okay, let me rephrase. They did not like what Carmine was doing because he went over there with the drug importation routes and he starts like sh shaking down everybody. And people were worried, specifically the Catronis, about the Hamilton area. They did not want him stretching into Hamilton because then that becomes a Bonanno monopoly. And guys in Canada did not understand why they were beholden to the Bonanno crime family. So there you go. That's sort of the the, the history of it. Uh, but I, I I think legitimately Toronto uh, and, and Hamilton, uh, Buffalo, New York, th those are always going to be the most important sort of things. In my opinion, in my opinion, but I don't live in Canada. I'm not even allowed in Canada. You know, hello. Oh, you were feeding the cats, all 64 cats. Angel has 64 cats. Uh, Andrangheta is okay. So Andrangheta is the mafia, but it's different. It's a different version. It's a different version. Uh, the easiest way to explain this to you is, uh, in Sicilian Cosa Nostra, they have their set of the rules, and Drangata has their set of rules. The difference being is the positions of power are completely opposite. Uh, it, it, uh, Cosa Nostra, a boss, underboss, conciliers, captains, soldiers, associates. And I cannot explain Andragata to you, so it's going to be like, boss, this, 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 then this, 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 then this, 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 then that, 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 then captain, then soldier, and etc. There is like 52 different tiers for Andrangheta, and they're all related. Sicilian Cosa Nostra used to be blood-related. Andrangheta is blood-related. Sicilian Cosa Nostra is no longer blood-related. Andrangheta is all blood-related. Everyone is related to everybody. That's the major difference. Uh, and Andrangheta was able to sort of infiltrate and move out of Corsica back in the old days and overtake the whole entire drug market. They are what organized crime is today. Uh, and it's somebody had said to me last week, you know, do you think maybe if Toto Rina had never been found, they would still be, they would be as strong as Andragada. I don't know about that. I just think that in the sheer numbers of Cosa Nostra versus Andragada is like a million to one is a million to one. It's ridiculous. I mean, they're in, 20 some countries Cosa Nostra is in like what seven eight nine countries maybe and the numbers are just staggering how many people there are so that's that's the major difference without me it, it's funny because anybody that listens to my podcast will tell you when I try to explain the hierarchy of Indrina people you know what I'll even show you guys this is this is exactly why I can't do it on the air uh hold on a second it's so convoluted um, and so absolutely frigging insane. All right, you guys ready for this? When you guys see this, you're going to be like, yeah, I give up. So we just explained what Cosa Nostra hierarchy was, right? Boss, underboss, sometimes there's a front boss, consigliere, captains, uh, associates, et cetera, right? Look at this crap. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't even let me see if i can photo zoom in um yeah hold on i'm trying to like figure out a way maybe this is just way too much like i can't even digest any of this up down left right b a b a start select start select like it, it's just ridiculous and it's designed that way to keep the police from being able to infiltrate them. Not only that, but Andrangheta acts very much clannish, right? So uh, if you have a, a map of Italy, try to try to look at it this way. In Sicily, you're going to have four or five different crime families, okay? But then when you look at a map of Italy with, Andr with Andrangheta, they have little splinter cells of each family. And there's like a thousand of these. And each one of them has hundreds of members, whereas uh, a New York family may have 250 total members in a boss. All right. And Dragata has 250 guys in a little tiny splinter cell. Uh, and I don't know if I can, um, 
look up a photo of that really quick to show you a map. Um, hold on one second. Okay, maybe I can. Let's see if we can do this. No, I don't need a political map. Hold on one second, guys and girls. Okay. The, the, once again, this is this is going to be probably very small photo, but I, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And what I want you guys to realize is everywhere you see a line is a splinter cell of one, of an Andrina. Okay. And each one of these long waves you're going to see with a dot has 250 plus members in that group. And it's going to show you the sheer size of what Andrangita is. So remember, I said each little dot, each little wavy line that, that, well, you probably, each wavy line that you see come across is a separate Andrina, which means it's a smaller faction of a bigger faction. And it's 250 plus members per dot that you're about to see. Do you guys kind of get it now? <laughs> That's insane. That's how big they are. In New York, you get Bonanno, Lucchese, Gambino, Genovese, Bonanno. Each one of these little dots you see on your screen where my mouse is, right, is 250, 250, 250, 250, 250. 250. 250 to uh, that's how big they are and that's why they're unstoppable you arrest a hundred of them there's still a thousand more to go it's just that simple it's just that simple ah uh, so i don't know if i if i explain that correctly the right way but if when i say andrina it's the same thing as andrangana it's the same thing All right, let me catch up to the chat. I'm going to scroll down. Mickey Griggs, how are you? Uh, let's see. Is anybody confused about Andrangina? I agree. Whoever says that about, uh, oh, Bernstein said he heard a little snuff got his button recently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Uh, do mob guys ever pass along bullshit through? Of course they do. Are you? Of course they do. They, they tell reporters anything that they think that they can just to make a fucking fool out of them. I've seen it done. I saw it done outside of Joey Merlino's trial. It was hilarious. You know? I have not watched that. Uh, let's see. It's really interesting. This stuff is written in Italian. You have World War II veterans coming back to the neighborhood. Some of the stuff. you Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. I'm a huge history buff. Uh, okay. I'm curious if the chin walked around like that in Manhattan. He walked around a block from my house. Sullivan street is a couple of blocks over where he had his triangle civic club, which I make those shirts. If you want a triangle civic club, you got to go over to our store. We make the social club shirts. And before I did it, before anybody says a word to me, I talked to somebody and said, yeah, go ahead. Who cares? Do it. So there you go. Uh, it's got like a map of Italy on it and it says uh, Sons of Italy or something like that on it. And then says uh, Sullivan Street, which was Vinny the Chin's clubhouse. But yeah, Houston is a couple of blocks over from me and Vinny walked up and down. And we love Costa Rica, especially San Jose, Costa Rica. Not that I've ever been there or Dominical. I've never been there either, but it's on my bucket list. Uh, is there really a mob presence on the West Coast of Canada? Yep, there is. There definitely is. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Persico had millions, but was never on the street. Uh, he was, but he wasn't. No, I get, I get your, you raise a good point. You are forgetting the literal ports. Easy access, getting stuff through to New York. Um, I still think in Buffalo, New York, that that's the big one, but there's, there's other ways they're getting stuff in. Uh, through Montreal and other places like that. We are Mickey. Hope you are too. Thank you. Meow. Andrea says 64 cats. Yes. Angel has a hundred. Did I say 64? I meant 164 cats and they're all named Jeff. Imagine that. 
Uh, too bad you can't come to Canada. Well, you know what? I was looking. I was looking into going to Canada, and there's some restrictions. I would have to to fill out some sort of special thing to send to the Canadian government. Uh, for uh, certain crimes, they say are you know rehabilitated after ten years in in, in Canada. And mine falls under the a weird category. Uh, if it was a drug offense or it was a an alcohol offense, forget it. Uh, but there is a way you can do it, but you just have to send stuff to Canada and get them to like sign off on it. So I've already talked to a lawyer about that because basically I want to go to Montreal and take a big dump on the Montreal Canadiens logo. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, I go back to 2017. Appreciate your work. No, I appreciate it too, man. I, I try to do the best I, I best I can, you know? Huge on blood related. They're all blood related. All blood related. Uh, the Montreal part probably would be, but when you talk in, in so going from nothing, I'm going to look at a map right now, but from Montreal to Detroit, to Toronto to Detroit, it, I'm always looking at things in proximity to less risk. From Montreal to someplace a little more risky than say Toronto, but I will agree that it was. It's probably easier to get stuff pushed out from uh, Montreal than Toronto. You know what I mean? All right, Medit, I'll look at your, I'll look at your, uh, I'll look at your uh, comment. I didn't see it. Uh, let's see. School's in session. I'm here. El Toro. Uh, they control 85% of the cocaine distribution. Outlaws in Detroit. In Chicago, pagans are trying to expand across the states, but not into Canada. Canada is violent at hell. Yeah, they they're they're not one to uh to mess around. But I've listen, I've never met a guy that was involved in that that was ever like non-cool. You know. Uh is that American Cosa Nostra or is that tell you? I don't know what in specific you're talking about, Jamie. I do not know specifically what you mean. Uh, they're more decentralized, splinter cell and clannish. Yes. And from what I've read, it's Freemason. Yes. That's that's the best way I've ever heard. That's the best way I've ever, I've ever heard it put. Like 33 degrees of a mason. That's the best way. And there's not one person that rules it. Because everything is is decentralized into towns. Or even if you go back to old Sicilian Cosa Nostra, I'm talking back to the 1700s, 1800s in Italy. Everything was about the town, the townships, because that's just the, the villages. That's just the way it went. Like, I'll give you, I'll give you a good idea. I was in Naples and when I was in Naples and I was even in Sorrento between Naples and Sorrento is a little bit of distance, but just in that region, there were 10, I think nine or 10 different bosses currently when I was there. And that's not like, we're not talking like 5,000 miles away either. Uh, do you think if Maria Licardi was the head of the major New York crime family, she would have lasted as long as she did? Oh, yeah. Well, and here's why. So that's a great question because, you know, and if you guys don't know who Maria Licardi is, please go and watch her video on her. Uh, would she have lasted as long given the same respect? I think at first she probably wouldn't have been given any respect KXTA, but I think she'd have pulled the trigger and that would have changed the <laughs> the religion very quick in New York City. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh let's see. Yeah, it's like a Freemason. That's that's really the best, the best uh oh the Madafries. Yeah. Yeah, the Madafries. A lot of there's Lebanese mafia. Okay, wait, Angel saying not 64. I thought it was 164. Are you lying to me again, Angel? <laughs> Angel's going to be getting like cat food mailed to her house now because everybody's going to think she has 164 cats named Jeff. <laughs> and one named Lee, because I know that if Lee's not named after a cat, he's going to get very upset. So, Lee, there is a cat named Lily. Lily the cat. We are all confused, but it's okay. Uh, Tom would need 100 suitcases to unpack it. <laughs> Yeah, no, he would. Uh, I don't like hypotheticals, but I have to ask. If you give Nikki Scarfo Totorina's power, do you think he still gets the same result? Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I still think, yeah, I think you get the same result. 
I, I do. I do. 186 cats here. Hit that like button. Oh, the cats are all now hitting the like button. Boy, the numbers of these cats just keep changing. I'm going to get a text. Shut up, jerk. Why is there so little known about Tommy Three Finger Brown? There's, I know a lot about Tommy Three Finger Brown. Go watch our Lucchese series. Well, I, I don't think it's not that people don't know a lot. They just, I don't think they know how to research. Really. I mean, okay, do I know like which side of the bed he slept on? No. Uh, do I have a good grip on uh, who he was as a leader, who he was as a man, how he came up in the life? Absolutely. Absolutely. The one that nobody seems to know about is like Neil Della Croce when he was like 16. If Neil Della Croce was still alive, I would like to have a sandwich, sandwich with him on the beach, just like John Gotti, and just talk about normal stuff. Just normal stuff. You imagine the insane shit that would come out of his mouth? You know, my coworkers from Costa Rica. Buffalo is bigger now. That film is absolutely not accurate at all. Meow. Uh, what's, what's up, Stopplex? And how you doing, cuz? Uh, Evan, a nice guy, Brian. Hello. Uh, you and Angel come to Canada, and I'll get you real deep-fried cod. Oh, you, you should have heard her going on and on and on about Long John Silvers the other night. Because that's the type of fish they use, cod. My father used to say, don't kick me in the cods. I don't, I don't know why he called his testicles cods, but he did. <laughs> don't kick me in the cods. Stop putting the figure four on me and stop kicking me in the cods. <laughs> he let me put the figure four on him and, he, and I'd pin down on the top leg and he'd start screaming. <laughs> That's a dangerous move if you really used it. And I'm not going to get Angel to go to Canada. I can't even get Angel to leave Long Island. You kidding me? Trudeau is a flake. Uh, even women are involved in drinking. Absolutely. Uh, if you have an OWI, you can't even get, Well, it, see, here's the thing. They take DUIs and drug offenses, like, really seriously. Right. So a lot of it is you have to have at least uh, the way I would tell anybody is you got to have at least 10 years because Canada looks at things as being resolved or re what they call rehabilitated within a 10 year stretch. But they have they have a, a point system for every sort of determined type of crime. Uh, so it just depends on the person. But but if you're going to go to Canada, I mean, my suggestion would be is to call the consulate. Tell them your, your crimes, and then they're going to give you like this SA-109 form that you fill out, and they determine whether you get in, which brings me to this obvious question. If I can't get in with my petty little bullshit, how the fuck are these rats getting into Canada? How does that happen? I don't get it. The cat named Lily is the boss cat. Lily the cat. I'm going to get a cat and call him Lily. I swear to God. Uh, Kingdom Builder, keep your foot on their necks. The people have gone on check for too long. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, listen, I just try to keep it real. I like COD myself. How do you remember every single guy's whole story? Do you have a photographic memory? No, I wish I did. God, that would have made school so much easier. I just have this inept ability to remember stupid shit nobody else would care about. Like if you insulted me, I remember where it happened and what time it happened. You know what I'm saying? But if you asked me last Tuesday at three o'clock what I was doing, I'd have to call Angel and ask her. Do you know what I was doing? Did I text you last week at three o'clock? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't remember what I do day, uh, day in and day out. I only know what I did a couple hours ago. That's why when people tell me, hey, you, that's why I have boss nanny come on sometimes. Hey, tell me some stories because I don't remember shit. But no, I don't have a photographic memory. But for some reason, when it comes to crime, I, I retain it. I can't retain what Angel's favorite color is, but I certainly can retain who killed who, when, and where, which may say more about me. I don't know. Yeah, you're dying for long, Johns. Yeah, it's called Road Trip. We'll make Elio drive, Angel. He'll go, why do you want to go to Long John Silvis? I love Long Johns. I like the hush puppies still. But Angel, I'm just going to tell you, if you're going to sit at the table, you're going to watch me drink malt vinegar. And it's gonna you're gonna go. Oh, you're just so disgusting. 
So disgusting, Spiffy. Now you're going to get the shits. Uh, do I think that Mickey Featherstone is still alive? I don't know. Figure four and the sleeper hold. The sleeper hold was my father's. Actually, you know what my father's move was? You guys ever heard of Baron Von Raschke, the claw? His was the claw. Not not like the fucking, uh, oh God, what are the, the, the whole family that died. Oh God, I can't even think of their names right now. The Von Erichs. No, my father, my father had this thing with Baron Von Raschke. He would always laugh and say, that guy's a hundred fucking years old. What my father didn't realize is they were basically the same goddamn age. And I never got to tell my father that. I would have loved, this is macabre, but I would have liked to look at him on his death, deathbed and say, Pop, I got I to tell you something. I've been holding it back my whole life. Yes, son. You know, you and Baron Von Raschke are born in the same year. You know that, right? Fuck you, son. <laughs> that's, 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 what I, that's what I would have gotten. Uh, no. No and no. Uh, Canada won't let you in for 10 on a DUI. If then convicted of murder, they'll do like 10 to 15. I'm not really sure. I think it just applies to who it applies to. But I've been told that some people go through uh, immigration without a problem. Then other people get screwed at the border. From what I understand, if you fly in, you get less of a hassle versus if you try to drive in, which would make sense to me. Yes, my short term is absolutely fucking garbage. Unless you've insulted me, uh, you know, then I remember long term stuff like that. Um, hockey will do that. I, you know, I don't know if it's that or it's just, you know, we've been uh, so accustomed as a culture to, to be looking at our phones all the time. Like, think about it. I bet all of us can think of five people's phone numbers that we knew as a little kid. We can riddle them off right now. But ask me what my own phone number is. I'll be like, uh, I got to look. <laughs> That's what I hate it. Like, anytime I'm somewhere, well, what's your number? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Let me scroll because I have no idea. So I think we use our brains in a different kind of way. And I don't think it's for the better, you know. Uh, but did hockey have anything to do with it? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Well, there you go. You've been listening to the podcast. The rule number one is do not let Elio drive. Correct. Brutus the Barber Beefcake. The Claw is a dad classic. Oh, yeah. And you know how you know when my father would really want to piss me off as a kid? He only had to do one thing. He only had to do one thing in the house, and it would send me into a fucking schizophrenic, hallucinogenic, I'm going to murder you. That's all he'd have to do is show me four fingers. And if he showed me those four fingers talking about the four horsemen, it was on like Donkey Kong. Because I hated those bastards when I was a kid. My dad's favorite move was the right hook. It's not a bad one. Did Angel say she doesn't like the vinegar? She's going to hell if that's what she said. Uh, if you think Canada is serious, Norway. Ah, I am. Okay, I thought you were going to go somewhere else with this KXTA. Norway is more serious in regards to people visiting their country and screening process. Well, see, and here's the weird thing. Uh, Jimmy Fradiano is a garbage pail. Uh, is that in this country, they say we have a hard border, but I've, listen, I know people that have gotten into this country with like nasty crimes. But yet anytime I've gone to like, Europe, like as far as London, Ireland, Scotland, Italy. Hey, welcome to our country. I don't get any of that shit. But Canada is like really strict. You know, their country, they're allowed to 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 sort of do it any way they want, I guess. But Canada has something that America doesn't have that all the Canadians are going to start throwing shit at me now is we don't have Timmy. Well, we have Timmy's, but they're nowhere in New York. I want goddamn Timmy's, Timmy Hortons. I don't care if you guys don't like his coffee. I like their coffee. There. You, you, I hate Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts can go fuck itself in the ass. I don't like their coffee. You know? But I like Timmy Hortons. I always have. But that's because I don't live there. Now, if there was a Wawa, I'd probably get sick of that, too. But it's like a treat. Anytime I'm in Philly, I can go to Wawa for something. You know? And Angel's probably going, what the fuck is a Wawa? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Alex, because you're close to Canada. Of course. Spiffy, what's a Wawa? 
Lee, do you know what Spiffy's talking about? Lee, what's a Wawa? How the fuck should I know, Angel? I'm watching rabbit porn. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll drop the link one last time or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to stay on too, too late tonight. I'll probably go for another 25, 30 minutes or so. The Four Horsemen. There you go. You got it. Oh, there you go. Oh, so see, I, okay, so I have to apologize to her highness because I was wrong about something. Imagine that. Hey, while was in Florida, that's crazy. I know they got up in Virginia. How did Spiffy come about? Well, you see, once there was this thing, it was Angel and me in an office eating a cake and she pulled out glue. And she glued my hand to my lips. Now, I, um, I think it's because I, I think I was dressed nice. I think that's where it came from. I think so. I can't remember. I remember. I remember. Well, never mind. I'm not going to. I don't want to. See, I'm trying to poke her a little bit, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stop poking her. Yeah, I never liked Dunkin' Donuts at all. Go get a donkey's. I go fuck your mother. That's how I see it. I never liked it. I like. Hey, listen, I, I, I'll eat a. My grandfather would buy us like Dunkin' Donuts as kids living in New England. Uh, and I liked them then. Now, forget it. Forget it. Uh, we have Wawa in New Jersey. First time I saw one was by Great Adventure. And you know what? Uh, where? What is, what's the name of that place? It's, I think it's in the Deeth sounds. Is it Pecker Woods? Is it called Pecker Woods? What is, it's like in a woodchuck. Somebody tell me the name of those places. I want to go to one of those. I want to take Angel to one of those. They got like the woodchuck. Is it called Pecker Woods or something? What is it? It's got like the big woodchuck and it's like a, like if you go south towards Virginia, you like get the Stuckies and the bullshit like that. I'm talking about like this mid south, I think. Like people driving from like Jersey to Florida always pass these things in like Georgia. What the hell are they called? It's like got the big woodchuck with the buck teeth. I want to go to that place. See, now I'm going to have to type in buck teeth. This is going to come up with this horrible picture. Buck teeth. Tooth Woodchuck <laughs> gas station. Oh God. This is gonna be interesting. Oh no, it pulled right up. There it is. Bucky's. You guys ever heard of Bucky's? Bucky's? Yeah, that's it. Bucky's. Bo got it. I've never been to a Bucky's. No, I went to a Bojangles when I was a kid. I used to eat croutons. I thought croutons were a, a specific menu item. We would go to this place, and first of all, it was uh, it was Bojangles, and I'll never forget. My father goes, "All right, what do you want?" It was after church. I was like, "I want to get the croutons off the menu." <laughs> it's like, son, do you know what croutons are? I didn't give a shit. Have them delivered, delivered to. Oh, so Bucky's is a huge truck stop. See, I thought, what the fuck, Elias Lindholm? Wow, Vancouver just made a big deal. Vancouver Canucks acquire Ford Elias Lindholm from Calgary Flames. But what did they get? Sorry, guys. So they got Lindholm from the Flames. That's a big deal. Oh, God. Kuzmenko. See, I knew Kuzmenko was going to go. All right. So the Flames have acquired Andre Kuzmenko in a 2024 first round pick for Hunter Brustowitz, uh, Joni Jumo, Jermo, excuse me, in a conditional 2024 fourth round pick for, for Vancouver. In exchange for Elias Lindholm. That's a big deal. That did they overpay though? I think they I think they Kuzmenko is gonna go either way. And a fourth doesn't oh shit. No, a first round pick. Wow. Yeah, Flames got a good deal in that. Highway robbery, I think. Sorry, just hockey stuff. Go to the your NHL transactions, it'll pop up. Hello, Jesse Roth. Jesse. Have you ever been to a Bucky's? Yeah, see, and this is where I got it from. Because you, you, Maz boss, sh uh, showed a picture of Bucky's, but there's this guy I follow on YouTube who goes in there and it looks like they got all of this cool shit that I want to buy. Like shit that you could never find anything else in the world. You know, Chuck E. Cheese is a child casino. Nothing more, nothing less. And the beer is there to get the parents drunk. Bucky's. 
You should have a store and sell ties. You can call it mob ties. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, every time I hear Bojangles, it reminds the West Arkansas Forest story. Every time I've heard of that place. Yeah, there was a Bojangles. Oh, God. What's that? Okay, you guys want to talk about, like, the most racist restaurant ever? The Bojangles, prior to that, was called Sambo's. That, horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah, beer at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, they have beer at Chuck E. Cheese now. Of course. Bucky Beaver. I want to go to a Bucky's. I don't, you know what it is? I don't even know what it is about Bucky's that I, that I like so much. I wonder if. What, ooh. So I'm looking to see what we could shop for in Bucky's shopping. A stuffed woodchuck. Oh, wait, no, that's an Etsy. Wow. All right, so the next person that goes to Bucky's has to text me and say, hey, I'm at Bucky's. What do you want? So why is Bucky's so famous? Providing award-winning clean restrooms, freshly prepared food, cheap gas, and outstanding customer service. Eh. I don't know what it is. I don't I really don't. Turkey Hill, when I lived in Pennsylvania, York, PA. I was at York. I went to Turkey Hill all the time. Uh, let's see. Buck E's general counsel, Jeff Nadella, explained that the company's parking lots and driveways aren't designed to accommodate truckers and that they're only made for passenger vehicles. Interesting. Yeah, I want one. Yeah, but gee, I don't know if I want to wear the one of those in New York, but it's bad enough. You know, uh, Maz boss, anytime I'm going down the street and they see that they see me wearing your shirt, they look at me and they verbally have to go look at me and go mozzarella boss and i'm like uh-huh where did you get that and then i you know write down the link for them or whatever so i hope you're selling some sweatshirts yeah turkey hill or wawa uh when i was in york pa it was always turkey hill for cigarettes and wawa for everything else uh arby's i haven't seen an arby's in years uh Huh. Interesting. See, Angel, we're we're not getting all these cool places. We don't have like a Bucky's. We don't have Long John Silvers. We don't have anything. We don't even have a goddamn well. You guys have Walmart out there in the boonies, but in the city, forget it. Forget it. I'm mad because Angel has good Chinese food where she's at. Unless you want to go to the Ho Wop Diddy Wop in my neck of the woods. I always thought Wawa subs were good. How the hell did I get on this topic? <laughs> Holy crap. Is there any mob content you guys want to talk about <laughs> instead of Bucky's? I bet Lee has been to Bucky's. Let's take a vote in the chat. And Lee, if you're listening, just be quiet because I'm going to name my cat Lee Lee after you. Who wants to bet that Lee has been to that gas station and has something he purchased at that gas station? Press one if you think that. Uh, my all-time favorite hockey player of all time uh, is going to be Mario Lemieux, followed by Brian Trottier. Uh, and then if I had to pick a goalie, I'm not going to say Patrick Waugh because I never liked him. I like him more now that he's retired. Uh, Probably Tony Esposito. I want Diddy Wop. Well, you have to come to Manhattan to get Ho Wop Diddy Wop. You have to come here to get it. You can go there at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Ooh, it's good food. Royal Farms, I've been to. Royal Farms, I've been to. Where is Lee Cole? I don't know. Lee disappears. He may be wrestling this evening. He doesn't want a lot of people to know, but he wears pink tights with the suspender deals and a mask. And he goes by the name of Leon Night Train. <laughs> Leon Night Train. And his finishing move is the giant splash off the top rope as he screams Angel Gotti. Yeah, see, I would take that bet because I bet you they have them in Texas. 
I'm glad you're a hockey fan. I'm a huge hockey fan myself. Ron Hextall. Well, you're a Flyers fan. God bless you. He really screwed up the Flyers and the Penguins as a manager anyway, and the Kings for that matter. But listen, you didn't screw around with the guy when he was on the ice. That's for sure. Let's turn this into a mob thing. Does the mafia have any hands in with Wawa or any other establishments? Not to my knowledge. <sighs> apparently strange stores. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. A Royal Farm. Wow. We're just going to keep going. 7-Elevens, anybody? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I knew Brian Trache very well. Uh, his whole family, believe it or not. Uh, because my parents' summer home his cousins lived on the corner, like at the end of my block. So him and Mike Bossy would come down and uh, play with us when we were kids. That's how I met him. But I knew him for a long time. And he's a large part of the reason why uh, I got to play professional hockey was because of him and him saying, yeah, this kid can play. Otherwise, forget it. I might not have ever been able to do that. But his voice was huge, was huge. And his son, Joel, was a really good player, too. Dominic Hasek. I kept doing that shit all the time. I hated that. A singlet. There you go. I don't know. Lee, Lee, I don't know. if Lee in a singlet. I'm telling you, his name was Leon Night Train. The splash was his move off the top rope. And he would either scream Polly or he would scream Angel Gotti. Can you imagine if Lee was really like Leon Night Train? So when you guys go into his chat from now on, just start saying Leon Night Train. And he'll be like, the hell, who is Leon Night Train? What do you guys keep saying that for? He'll have no clue. He'll have no clue. Oh, all right. Going through. Oh, you're a Blackhawks fan. Yeah. No, it's tough to, to be at that age. You know, an 18-year-old kid and break your jaw. It's definitely not easy. But he's going to be around for a long time. And, uh, you know, what do I think of the Danbury Trashers? I played with a couple of guys that were on that team. I played with several of them in different leagues. Uh, and that's a very interesting story. I think that they've inflated some things. I got to be honest with you. But uh, I, I don't think that that kid should be bragging that he ran a hockey team when his father was a gangster and paid for everything. Just because your father paid for a, a hockey team does not mean you don't know anything about hockey. Like, I'm just being, I listen to him talk about hockey. He really doesn't have very much of a hockey IQ whatsoever. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, it's just one of those things. But I knew a couple of guys. So when I saw that, uh, the documentary, I called a couple of guys I played with on the phone and said, Jesus, I didn't know that. It's like, yeah, we, we knew. We just didn't want to say anything. And a lot of the reasons why nobody said anything is because they were all getting paid under the table. You know, they were they were they were making hand over fist down there. Jerry Cheevers, yeah, he was great. He really was. Oh boy. Oh look, we have a disgusting slut, garbage pail. Loser coming into the chat. You're gone. <laughs> Never fails. Hey, guess what? Guess what I'm selling? Your soul. Because you whistle when you walk, whether you realize it or not. So take that, Pam, and whistle while you walk. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> well, Iowa is a very, very long trip you imagine a road trip with angel Gotti? angel we're going to iowa to go to long john silvers what's iowa it's a state oh i've heard of ottawa or uh, excuse me iowa not halfway there she's gonna be like i'm gonna kill you there's nothing but cornfields just making fun of her and don't call me shirley yeah road trip to stacy stacy we're all coming to iowa now i bet iowa's cold it just Iowa, it sounds cold. 10-hour drive. No, thank you. Uh, some of the movie Slapshot with Paul Newman was filmed in my hometown in Utica, New York. Utica is a, blade, a great place, a uh, historic place. Slapshot is the best hockey movie ever. And I don't care what anybody... If anybody says young blood was, I'm going to puke all over myself. Stan Makita's. Didn't they make that up? No, he actually had a place. He actually did have a place. Oh, God, of course. 
Somebody's going to bring up Mark Messier. Uh, my grandmother dated Reggie Leach. I played for the Junior Flyers and Reggie's son. Jamie was in Pittsburgh Miners. Jamie Leach got me a sign of music. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. If I could live anywhere else, it would be Pittsburgh. Legitimately. I spent a lot of time in Pittsburgh, so if I could live anywhere else, it would be in Pittsburgh. Honest to God. I would live in the Steel City. I wouldn't cheer for the Steelers, uh, but I would live in Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. Food's great. People are great. You know. All right. All right, guys, we have gotten away from what we came here to talk about. There's probably somebody screaming, why aren't we talking about the mafia? We're talking about hockey now. Why on God's earth would you come into my chat and lay low? There's no reason to unless you did something wrong. You didn't do nothing wrong. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't need a trip to Iowa for Arby's. I have one a few blocks away. <laughs> I was thinking of getting together with my wife this evening, but uh, you put Lee in pink tights. My mind said, that's done. Yeah. Well, imagine he's, what did I say? His name was Leon Night Train. Yeah. And he's wearing like hot neon singlet with a nice pink, with a, with a black leather mask. <laughs> and he jumps off screaming Hiawatha. Fuck Eugene Morello as he jumps off the top rope. I like Slapshot. What was the name of the movie with Raquel Welsh? They roller skated and hit each other. That's got to be. Do you guys remember that from the 70s? Did anybody watch Roller Derby? I loved that shit. Even though it was fake, I loved every minute of it. Oh, a Borat swim? Yeah, no, I don't want to see Lee in that. All right. Does anybody know the, mo the movie Angel was talking about? The roller skating movie with Raquel Welsh? As everybody Googles away now. A uh, roller skating movie. Kansas City Bomber. Kansas City Bomber Angel, is that it? Kansas City Bomber, is that it, Angel? Was it Kansas City Bomber? No, it wasn't Boogie Nights. <laughs> Although, looking from the uh, holy crap. I, it might, might it might as well be Boogie Nights looking at the cover of this film. Holy crap, she was hot then, too. Good Lord. Great. Next, tonight's going to be YouTube, Kansas City Bomber. <laughs> X-rated version. <laughs> oh, God. Hilarious. The Warriors. Yeah, it's a classic. Uh, in Philly, they're shutting down all 7-Eleven stores. That doesn't surprise me. They still haven't shut down Kensington yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Holy crap, is that place just a, just a zoo? Horrible. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, she was. All right, what's your favorite mob movie? And you're not allowed to say... Goodfellas. <laughs> there goes everybody's vote. <laughs> Goodfellas, well, uh. I don't know if you guys have ever, uh. There's a couple of mob movies that are really good. But I don't like a lot of them. Casino, that's not bad. A Bronx Tale, Rob the Mob, Jesse Roth coming out of left field. I knew the Gotti one would come up. The Irishman, Frank Sheeran. Is that really, Andrea? Is that your favorite film? Really? Legitimately? You know, I got in big trouble when I went to see that film. You guys want to find out how? Legitimately. Legitimately, this is no joke. Okay, a mob guy calls me up and says, hey, we're going to go see Kill the Irishman. We're all going to go. I said, all right, who's going? Me, this guy, yeah, bring your cousin. I said, okay, is, is this other guy going to come? 
He's like, no, 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 nobody can get a hold of him. And I'm like, all right. So there's like 10 of us. They're like, I don't even know what the hell theater we went to, but it was not a normal movie theater at all. It was like a theater theater. And we're watching this thing. And in the very end, Silvio Dante is singing. Right? You guys remember the end? Silvio Dante is uh, singing in the very end, like some operatic song. And I leaned forward to holy shit, guys, it's fucking Elio. <laughs> I got in big trouble because they all went back and told him I said it. But yeah, all you could do is hear 10 guys laughing their asses. Holy shit. That's Elio. At his height. Absolutely. He did. I remember when the 96 Gotti came out. I remember I was with a friend of mine named Dracula Roselli. And I remember he's like, oh, we're going to watch this. It's like, oh, God, who wants to watch this? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. We watched it. I was surprised. It's very good. It's very, it was very good. I mean, if you look historically, it's not exactly accurate. But, I mean, it's, for me, I thought everybody they cast was really good. Yeah, they should. Can you imagine if they made a, a movie about Mad Sam Stefano and some of the debauchery that would take place? Holy crap. I want them to make a an Angel Gotti movie. I don't, you know what? I don't think Armand was overrated. I, I think, honestly, he got, here's something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. Armand DeSante got John's speech patterns down the way he talked, the way he talked with his hands. I mean, he got that down. I mean, was he John Gotti, like, to a T? No, absolutely not. But see, I also, I'm a huge fan of, uh, oh Christ, what's his name? William Forsyth. I love William Forsyth. I didn't think he was a good Sammy though. I really, I really didn't. I, I just don't think he played a good, a good Sammy, even though William Forsyth is half Italian. He just, I don't know. Oh yeah. 10th and Wolf. <laughs> There's a winner. <laughs> <clears throat> you want to see a Joey movie, huh? I think for me, I think a great film. Well, fuck Robert De Niro's doing the video Genovese thing and the Costello thing or whatever it is he's fucking doing. Um, I think Sal Polisi is a lying fuck. I don't think he tells anything. Uh, I don't think he tells anybody anything that's true. Especially about the Gaudis. I mean, we have Angel Gotti in the chat. She'll tell you, just like everybody else, the guy's an absolute friggin' liar. Uh, I think a Charlie the Bug Workman film would be fantastic. Uh, I think a real Luciano film, a real Luciano film would be fantastic. In fact, if somebody came to me tomorrow and says, all right, here you go, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to give you $25 million. Make a mob film about anybody you want. First guy I'm going with is Luciano. First guy I'm going with is Luciano, hands down, or I'm going to go with Angelo Bruno. But I would do the Angelo Bruno story that sort of kicks in right before he gets killed, then sort of goes into the 90s in South Philly. I think that would be insane. I think a, a film on uh, Carlos Marcello would be freaking fantastic. Absolutely. And that's where they really, Bo, that's where they really, I felt screwed up. Uh, with the Irishman is if they had focused on some of the politics with Hoffa, the politics with the Kennedys and spent a little more time sort of explaining that to the audience, I think it would have been a better film. Just my opinion. You could make a Salvi Testa movie, uh, have it be the audience gets to love the guy, but he dies Hollywood. Yeah, that's true. Angel says, hello to William Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, look at this. Angel Gotti. How are you, young lady? Uh-oh, getting them sprung. She says, hello. Uh, who else? Uh, I think a, a realistic movie on Sam, uh, I think a movie on Sam Giancana would be interesting. He walked, so he walked legitimately out of the jungles and flew back. Legitimately. He had leeches and shit all over his body. Can you imagine how pissed off he must have been walking through that jungle having leeches and crap and bugs biting him and just thinking, I'll wait till I get my hands on that little sniveling shit, Bobby. Uh, Oni Madden would be fantastic too. Now, see, I think if you did like a, a period film 
with Luciano taking over the, the whole entire mafia. I mean, you can make a whole entire film that in of itself. Richie killed Bobby Lupo. That's the best line in any. I'm so good. <laughs> you know, that's the most quoted Steven Seagal line every, every, everywhere I go. <laughs> Richie killed Bobby Lupo. <laughs> you know the best part of that? You remember the guy red with the the the, the fucking the mustache and the beard, and Steven Seagal's taking the uh, the cue ball, and you know what he's going to do with it, and he cracks the guy twice with it. Oh, it's the best motherfucker! You knocked out my teeth. Cracks him again. <laughs> oh, a real DeMeo film. Yeah, Jimmy Burke. He got on a plane and just flew back. I'm not exactly sure how they they apparently didn't have any stopgap when he went to get on a plane. Anybody seen Richie? Anybody seen Bobby? You don't kill Bobby Lupo. That's a great. Yeah, yeah, that's the best Seagal film ever. Motherfucker, you knocked out my teeth. <laughs> Crack hits him again <laughs> as the guy spitting all his teeth on the pool table. <laughs> oh. But yeah, there's a lot of mob films, I think. Here's the problem why you're not seeing mob films, okay? So number one, Hollywood doesn't know anything about organized crime. And when they typically make these films, they get informants who know even less about organized crime. And it's hard to, I think from, from my tastes and Chris Gorky will tell you this about myself is that I'm such a mob snob when it comes to films, like Hollywood likes to butcher historical facts. Just, just do it based on what we know. And yeah, I understand when you're writing, you have to interpret some things left or right. And I get that. But I mean, think about what Luciano had to go through to take over organized crime. Look at what Vito Genovese went through. How about a film on Meyer Lansky? You know what I mean? Like a legit film on Meyer Lansky or, or any of these guys. And, and, and just the Cuba stuff itself, in and of itself, is a film. I just don't think that they understand David Ferry. Yeah. I just don't think that they understand organized crime is, is oh, yeah, that, that's another one. That's what the Jamaican drug dealers, right? Right? Uh, you're a dead man walking. That's, that's another one. That's another one that's my favorite. Screwface. Uh, but yeah, I just, it seems like they're picking these very weirdly, like this De Niro, Vito Genovese thing is going to be awful. It's just going to be awful. Mm -hmm. I heard you thought he was cute. And them eyebrows. You said, oh, if I could find a man with eyebrows like that. Uh, let's see. The rust of the Irishman is pretty good. Yeah, it's, there were parts of that that were great. I just thought that, that, that overall, it just wasn't that great. You know, like my gangster film, like Goodfellas is great because the violence is real. The story's somewhat conflated. Casino killed me because I wanted, I wanted, uh, I wanted Sharon Stone like murdered five minutes into it. She's a whiny junkie. I don't need that. What does that got to do with nothing? Get rid of her already. You know? So it's like for me, it's just hard. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area Bombers, Joanne Weston, best blocker in roller derby. Look at Larry coming in with the big facts on roller derby. I love it. I used to love it. The guys with the giant afros, like in the seventies, getting thrown over the side. I I would hoot and holler, watch that. And my father, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you watching this? It's like I love it. <laughs> People abusing each other. There you go. Screwface gave me a thousand uh, deaths. Man, a thousand deaths. Best scene, and then he jumps out the window. Yep, absolutely. I didn't either, and I tried watching it a second time, and it was just more long-winded than I could have dealt with. It's just too long. Uh, Goodfellas 1, The Godfather 1, 2, hard to beat. See, for me, The Godfather 2, I liked better than The Godfather 1. But because I like the old montages and, and, and everything like that, but it's just, plus I'm a huge, I was a huge Bruno Kirby fan. Uh, he died very young. Sad. I forgot about Sharon Stone's character. I guess she's 85% of the film. She is. And that was the central focus is, is Ace Rothstein's, you know, wife is banging Joe Pesci's character and she's a junkie and creating all of these problems. Like that's not, the, that's not the story. 
like go to the real story of casino and what actually happened out there. And it was like completely, uh, different. Yeah. James Woods was great as a pimp. Yeah. Uh, Seagal worked as a sheriff for a TV show in the parish I live. A good friend of mine was arrested by him after a bar fight. Yeah, how does a guy like Seagal become like a parish cop? And that's the other thing about Seagal. One minute he's got a Louisiana accent. One minute he's got a Brooklyn accent. The next minute he's like, now he's Russian. Like he can't figure it out. What he needs to figure out is get that thing off of his head that looks like somebody ripped off the, the, the drapes and glued it to his head. Just go bald. Enjoy it. Be yourself. It looks like he's wearing camel snatch on his head. I I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> there goes my monetization. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, have you guys ever seen the Joe Gallo film with Peter Boyle? Have you guys <laughs> Beaver Pelt? Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen the movie with Peter Boyle who plays Joey Gallo? And it's called Crazy Joe. Eli Wallach said it. It's a good film. Uh, it got a six and six, almost a six and a half out of ten. <laughs> And it came out in 1974. Tulsa King, I have not watched. I would agree with you. Tulsa King, I have not watched at all. I won't watch it. Oh, God. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard bits. He can play the guitar, though. I'll give him that. The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight is the best mob film ever made. Have you guys ever seen Angel? Are you, if you're in the chat, Angel, have you ever seen the gang that couldn't shoot straight? So George Raft was a straight gangster. He saved Jimmy Cagney's life. George Raft knew all the mob guys, was friends with all of them. And the mob was going to kill Jimmy Cagney because he was interfering in the unions, the SAG and the, uh, the Writers Guild. And the mob at the time controlled those unions, and they sent a letter to Jimmy Cagney's wife saying, we're going to kill him. And he ran to uh, George Raff for help, and Raff got them to leave him alone. There you go. Yeah. Angel, Angel, uh, what are you going to order? What are you going to order? Jesus, I'm actually getting ready to get out of here in about five minutes. Um, the gang that couldn't shoot straight. You guys go on to YouTube. Here, I'll, you know what? I'll do you guys even one more solid than that. You guys got it. The book is the book is fantastic. Uh, hold on one second. I'm not going to. I'm not going to obviously play this on the show because then I'll they'll take away my monetization. But I'm going to put the trailer down here in the chat, and you guys can go watch the trailer. The trailer's hilarious. The whole movie is hilarious. I think Angel Gotti needs to go watch that movie. Oh, a David Ferry book. Okay, gotcha. I did not know that you were that voracious of a reader, Medit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you watch the U.S. My father was in the Navy when he got a copy of the book, and I'll never forget. He said that he laughed his ass off, and then the movie came out. And I remember one year for my birthday, he gave me the DVD and the book. He says, "Son, you need to watch this and read this." The book was great, but the film was just fucking hilarious. He sends a he sends his poor bastard wife out to start the car every day. Because it's because there's a bomb planted underneath of it. Oh, God. But the funny thing is there were so many things because Jerry Orbach, for those of you that do know and don't know, was very tight with Joey Gallo. They were very close friends. And a lot of the stuff that he put into the movie, if you watch real close, are things that Joey Gallo was going through. Like the whole thing with the lion, Cleo the lion. <laughs> 
uh, you know, but oh, Angel, if you watch the gang that couldn't shoot straight, you'll laugh your ass off. You're going to be like, oh, my God, Spiffy, this is the funniest ever. Or a couple other people might remind you of people they know, but the fact that Herbe Villache is in it, you know, tattoo from uh, Fantasy Island, it's hilarious, especially when he gets on the back of the Cadillac and he's trying to stab the tires with a, a pen knife. And then the guy, the mob guy just smacks him in the face, just palms him to get him away. Hilarious. Hey, Tony Salo, my man. So. We have really kept almost 180 in here all night tonight, and I didn't come with a lot of stuff. So let me tell you what we got going on this Friday over on our uh, podcast. Um, there's my link if you guys want to donate. I would appreciate it if you do. If you can't, I certainly understand. But but think about it. Every dollar you guys don't do donate, the less chance you're going to have to see Leon Night Train wrestle. If you guys want to see Leon Night Train wrestle, we need your money. I'm going to do the Jimmy Swaggart thing. <laughs> uh, yes, Beard the Butcher, he did say that. Yeah, Jerry Orbach did. But Jerry Orbach was slick, man. When the cops, the cops pulled him in to talk to him, I don't know nothing. Uh, but if you guys want to see Leon Night Train, the wrestler, we need your donations. <laughs> Anyway, on Friday, we're going to do a big Q&A. We also are going to do another edition of the Rat Files where we go through all of the informants that are known to man, and we get into details about that. And we are going to be talking about the Detroit partnership or the Detroit uh, organized crime uh, as well. Uh, we'll have... One or two little things I, I, you know, throw in there at the very beginning. Uh, as far as on YouTube, uh, our next live, I believe Tony Silo, you're going to kill me for. Damn it, Angel. Uh, thank you for the donation, Angel. And as you can see, <laughs> you can regret doing this now. As you can see, there is one person in here who wants to see Leon Night Train more than anybody else. And that's Angel Gotti. So, Lee, if you're watching, Get the pink tights ready and get the the rubber mask ready. You are going to be Leon Night Train. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Sunday, we will be back. We will be back here on Sunday at 8.15 8 p.m. Uh, to do another live. And I will be coming this weekend with a big, big topic or at least a topic of substance. I typically don't like to do these things free floating because I'm not very good at them. Just going to be honest with you, but tonight went pretty well. I cannot complain. Uh, no, I'm not buying her long John Silvers. This is going towards the Leon Night Train wrestling event. And who can we put Leon Night Train against? Uh, he'll have to wrestle against Tom Lavecchia, who we'll call uh, the Gripper. The Gripper, the Ripper Gripper. I don't know. What's a funny name for Tom? Anybody got a funny name for Tom? And don't say the Boozer. Because that would just not, that's be ridiculous. Uh, so we have Leon Night Train versus Tom Lavecchia. What would Tom Lavecchia be called? Oh. <laughs> Give him a leash and a kitty as a sidekick. We'll Aha, I got it. It will be Leon Night Train and Lily the Kitty. There you go. Oh, God. Something to do with this beard. <laughs> also, guys, we are going to do something different on this channel that I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with, but it's called a watch party. Do you guys know what a watch party is? Well, I'm going to tell you. We are actually going to watch a mob film. We'll pick one, and we will actually legitimately watch it on like a Friday night on this channel. And while we're all watching the movie together, we will be texting and typing to each other and I'll stop it and make comments about the film and stuff like that. Is that something that you guys would be interested in doing is a watch party? It won't get me suspended, but I can't monetize it. So Tony Silo is down for a watch party. Anybody else? Alan comes in with 1999 and he ties Angel because he wants to see Leon Night Train and Lee Lee the Kitty. <laughs> uh, what was the I see I what was the Al Capone movies with Sylvester Stallone? Oh my god, I can't remember that. I know what you're talking about. I just can't think about it off the top of my head. 
But if you guys, are, sorry, I'm not ignoring you, Alan, at all. I'm, uh, does anybody does anybody know what those films were? Where uh, that Sylvester Stallone made, where he played Al Capone? I know it wasn't Fist. <laughs> uh, let's unpack this. Do Casino. Well, I tell you, here's what we can do. Here's what we'll do. Here is what we will do. On Sunday night, I want all of you to come back into this chat at 8.15, and we will take a vote on which film that we are going to do. I'll bring like three or four that I know I can get for free that I don't have to pay for that we can all kind of do a watch party together in that way. And what we can do is a couple of different things. We'll we'll vote on which film we're going to pick. Everybody will come in and we can chat about it during the film. Then we can stop it for a few minutes at a time, bring people on as guests and talk about what we're watching. We'll do a whole entire thing and I can take donations and stuff like that. If you guys are interested in doing that, that's what I thought. He played Nitty and Capone. Where are they going to wrestle? Angel's Backyard. Yes, they are going. And we, Lily and Leon Night Train are going to be jumping off of her outdoor cat boxes. Like, so you'll get the whole uh, extreme wrestling thing too. All right. Good night, Jesus. Uh, you kill me, Polish mob comedy. That is actually really good too, Baywatcher. So if you guys are definitely into the watch party idea, and it doesn't have to be just a mob flick, we can we can take a couple of different ones. Or I don't know, maybe we could even you know what we could do? You know what we could do? We could watch a gang that couldn't shoot straight. We could do that. A lot of people haven't seen it, and it's a watch party. You come in here. The film plays while we're sitting here talking and everything else. So here's the deal. Come back. <laughs> Thanks, Sella. Here's the idea. Come back this Sunday night at 8.15, and we will decide what film we're going to do, and then we'll pick a day that's best for everybody. Because obviously we know we got the Super Bowl coming up. We don't want to get in the way of that. I get it. Uh, but yeah, definitely, if you guys are interested in that, please come back this Sunday at 8.15, and we will pick a movie, and we'll decide what day we're going to do it. You know, based on what everybody thinks. And the cool thing about a watch party is you'll get to see me like in the corner and you'll see the film going and we'll stop periodically and just talk to everybody and uh, get everybody to come on and just have a good time. I don't think anybody's ever done this in the mob genre before, so I think I will be the first. Anyway, all of that being said, I want to just really quickly thank Gilbert. I want to thank uh, my buddy D. I wanted to thank Kay Goody. I wanted to thank Steven Nunez. Thank Kingdom Builder. Thank the lovely Angel Gotti, who is donating to the Lili and Leon Night Train Wrestling Fund. Eric Torson and Alan, thank you very much. I appreciate it more than you guys will ever know. Uh, yes, we can do it without getting a strike, 100%. I know how to do this without getting a strike because I'm not monetizing it. I'm not monetizing the video. But you can earn donations off playing something else as long as it goes to your cash app and stuff like that. So we can do that, but we will figure it out. So please, everyone come back this Sunday night, 815, and we will pick a movie. I'll have like a choice of four and we'll all pick. Sound good? Everybody press one if they, they understand what I'm saying. A watch party would be great. We'll have to get Leon. We'll have to get Leon for the watch party. You imagine Lee critiquing some mob film? You know, I really don't like this, Jeff. There's not enough Bangkok women in this. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see all of you Sunday night at 8.15. And for those of you on the podcast, it should be out, I want to say, by 5 o'clock on Friday afternoon, probably like at 1 p.m., knowing me. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for participating because it's a very integral part to this show. And thanks to all of you who donated.